So you've picked up the new Galaxy Tab S9, S9 Plus, or S9 Ultra, and now you're wondering what are the first things you should do to get it set up. But well, you came to the right video because today we're going over all of the things that you need to do first on your new tablet. And the very first thing you're always going to want to do is go into your settings and then go ahead and sign in to your Samsung account. If you don't have a Samsung account, I highly suggest you create one because it's going to give you access to important features like private sharing, cloud backups, it give you access to the Galaxy Store, and of course, to things like Find My Mobile. So if you ever misplace any of your Galaxy devices, like your phone, your tablet, or even your Galaxy watch, you can use the find my feature to find your lost devices. So if you don't have a Samsung Galaxy account, I highly suggest you create one and log in. Now, the next thing we're going to do is make our device faster. And to do that, we're going to go to about tablet. We're going to go to software information and then look for your build number right here and tap on it seven times to enable developer mode, put in your pin. And then when you go back to your settings, You'll see this developer options down here tap into here and then scroll down a little bit until you see something called window animation scale transition animation scale and animator duration scale go into each one of these and set it from 1x to 0.5x and what this is going to do is double the speed of your animations so anytime you're opening or closing applications you can see that there is an animation that pops the app onto your screen so increasing these animation speeds is just going to make your tablet feel a lot more snappy as you're able to move between applications a lot quicker next what we're going to do is go over to our display settings so we're going to tap into here and make sure that you're setting your tablet to dark mode if you selected light mode you can see that what happens is the whole tablet gets lit up but if we switch to to dark mode not only does it look better in my opinion but any pixels that are completely black are actually off so it's using less battery to power your display and because these are much larger displays than like a phone it's going to take a lot more battery to power your display especially if you have light mode enabled so definitely set it to dark mode to preserve some battery life next we're going to go over into our tablets lock screen we're going to tap on the screen to enable it and then we're going to tap on the clock right here and you're going to see all of these widgets pop up now these are all the widgets that are here by default you can see you have your music player you have your alarm you have a voice recorder and you have your routines but if you want to add more widgets or remove any of these that you don't want you can just tap on the settings right there and right here you can see all of the widgets that are available so if you want to see the weather on your lock screen you can just enable it from here if you want to see your digital well-being you can enable this maybe you don't want your music so you can disable it from here and you can also reorder it so if we tap onto here and we want to move weather all the way to the top so that's the first thing we see we can just do it that way and now what's going to happen is if we go back to our lock screen and then we go back and tap on the clock you can see the weather information right here obviously i haven't set it up yet so you can't actually see the weather we would have to go in here and give it permissions for our location and then you can see our digital well-being right here so if you want some of these widgets definitely go through here and set these up to your liking all right guys the next thing we're going to do is get rid of these buttons and use swipe navigations instead i know a lot of people like buttons but for me personally i don't like that it takes up some space on your screen and I just think it's an old, outdated way to use your uh, tablet. And it's just a lot more intuitive to use swipe navigation. So we're going to go over to our settings. Then we're going to go to display and look for the navigation button bar uh, settings right there. So we'll tap onto this and we're going to change this to swipe gestures. And you're going to see these buttons are going to disappear. And now we can just swipe to navigate around our tablet. So we can swipe from either side to go back. We can swipe up to go to the home screen and we can swipe up to hold and bring up all of our background processes like that. If you've never used swipe gestures, I highly suggest you give it a try and give it about a week just to get used to it. And I guarantee you, you're going to like it a lot more than the legacy way of using these buttons. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is change the grid. So we're gonna tap on our home screen. We're gonna go to settings. And then right here, you'll see home screen grid and app screen grid. And what these do is control how many applications you can have on your home screen so you can see right now we have six by five but we can select eight by five and you can see how it minimizes everything and we have more room for more icons or we can do 10 by five for the most screen space possible so if you like to put a lot of widgets and a lot of different applications on your screen this is definitely a great way to add more real estate to your screen so we're going to tap done and you can see now we can fit a lot more icons and even widgets up here just to have a lot more on our screen now, when you swipe right on your display, it's going to take you to your Google News Feed. And you can see this is all of the articles that Google serves you. Now, what you can do is if you don't want to use the Google News Feed, if you tap and hold on your screen, you can go to settings. And then right there, you can see it says add media page to home screen. And we have a choice between Google Dis Discover or Samsung Free. If you want Samsung Free, you can just enable it. And now you can see when we swipe over, 
we have our Samsung free right there. And you can see what we have is we have some news articles. We can watch live TV or podcasts or even play games. So it's definitely a nice service if you want to use this instead of Google uh, news feed. But if you don't want either of those and you want to just disable this entirely, what you can do is just tap and hold on your screen, scroll over and then just disable it from here. And now you can see that we no longer have that news feed. And all we have is just our homepage with our applications and widgets. All right, guys, the next thing we're going to do is learn about some of the cool gestures that our Galaxy tablet is capable of. So for one, for example, instead of always having to reach and look for your power button to lock your uh, tablet right there, what you can do is just simply double tap on the screen and you can see it will lock it and to unlock it all you got to do is just double tap again and you can see it will wake up the tablet and this is much easier than always having to look for the uh, power button right there so it just makes using and navigating your tablet a little bit easier and if you want to learn about some of the other gestures what you can do is go over to your settings scroll down to advanced features and then right there you'll see motions and gestures and you can see right there it says double tap to turn on screen and double tap to turn off screen so both of these are enabled we also have the option to cover the screen to mute so if you're getting a phone call or some kind of notification you can just flip the tab over or put your hand over the screen to mute it and you can see we have palm swipe to capture so if we just swipe our palm over you can see it'll take a screenshot so a lot of these are already enabled but you should just learn about what they do and the one that's not enabled i would actually suggest you go ahead and enable this because what this will do is keep the screen on while viewing so if you're ever reading a long article or just looking at a photo and you're not interacting with the screen it's going to dim and get ready to auto lock so that it preserves battery life and it'll prevent you from having to keep tapping on your screen to keep it awake you can see that what it will do is use your selfie camera to see that you're actually looking and interacting with the screen and it will just keep it awake and won't auto lock and it's just a nice little feature that makes it a little bit more convenient using your tablet all right so next back in our settings what we're going to do is scroll over to display and then in here we're going to go down to motion smoothness and we're going to make a decision whether we want adaptive or standard so if you want that really fast refresh rate and that buttery smooth feeling you're going to want to set this to adaptive because you can see it is going to bump your refresh rate up to 120 hertz now if you're somebody who doesn't really notice that refresh rate and you would rather preserve battery life because 120 hertz is going to use a lot more battery life than if you set it to standard which is only going to cap it at 60 hertz but again if you don't really notice that faster refresh rate or you just prioritize battery life over the refresh rate, I would suggest you go ahead and set this to standard. Then we're going to go back into our display settings and then we're going to go to font size and style. Now in here you can change your font. So you can see when I drag this bar up, it's going to increase the font and you can see everything on the tablet gets bigger. So if you're somebody who maybe doesn't have the best vision and you just want to make everything a little bit bigger, this is where you would do it. So definitely go ahead and play with this until you find the right uh, font size for you. And then if you want, you can also change the actual font of your tablet. So we have a few different options here, but if you want some more, you can always go and down load some different fonts from this store. All right, next we're going to go back into our display settings and we're going to go to uh, screen mode. And right there you can see it's by default set to vivid and vivid is going to make the colors a lot more saturated and just pop a little bit more. You can see if we scroll through these pictures, just what that will look like. But if you are somebody who maybe uses your tablet for video or photo editing, you're probably not going to like vivid because it's going to oversaturate your photos and you're going to want to select natural as well. And you can see the difference between these if you just flip it between them the natural is a little bit more muted and it just looks a little bit more natural so again if you're into photo or video editing you're definitely going to want to set it to natural just to get a more color accurate display but if you just like to watch a lot of videos and play games vivid is definitely nice because it's going to make everything look a little bit more colorful now, while we're on the topic of watching videos and consuming media, the next thing we're going to we're gonna do is go to our advanced features and then look for something called video brightness. So we go right here and you can see it's set to normal. But if we set this to bright and what will happen is every time we're watching any media on these applications, it will temporarily increase the screen brightness and make colors more vibrant. So if you're watching videos on Netflix or YouTube, it's going to brighten up your screen and make the colors a little bit more vibrant and saturated just for a better video experience. And of course, with better video, we also want better sound so to improve the sound on our tablet we're going to scroll over to sound and vibrations and then we're going to scroll down to sound quality and effects and in here we're going to enable dolby atmos and dolby atmos for gaming now these are disabled by default but if you enable them it's going to give you the best audio quality out of your tablet all right so we got better video we got better audio the next thing we want to do is get better security so if we scroll down to security and privacy 
and then right here you'll see app security if you tap into here we have something called device protection now this isn't available on all tablets depending on where your region is or if you got your phone from a certain provider you might not have this and if we tap turn on you can see what it's going to do is enable an antivirus that's going to keep our tablet secure by scanning our tablet for any bad applications or malware on our tablet so what we can do is actually just tap scan tablet and it's going to scan through all of the applications on our tablet and just check for any security vulnerabilities. So there you go, you can see the scan has finished and there are no threats found on the tablet. Awesome, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to security and privacy. We're gonna scroll down to auto optimization and we're gonna enable auto optimization. And what this is going to do is simply restart when needed. So you can see it says restart your tablet automatically to keep it in the best condition. So if your tablet is running for day after day, week after week, month after month, and things start slowly bogging down, maybe there's an application that gets stuck or some processes that are hanging, all it's going to do is give your tablet a reboot to keep it running at an optimal state. And you can see it will actually restart when you're not using the tablet. So typically at night, it'll give it a reboot just to not be interruptive to your day-to-day -day usage. All right, guys, the next thing we're gonna do is change something that everybody hates. And that is that by default, when you long press the power button, it will bring up your Bixby assistant. First of all, nobody likes Bixby. And second of all, a lot of people still like that legacy feature that when you long press your power button, you get your actual power options menu so that you can power off or restart your tablet. So to change that, what we're gonna do is go into our phone settings. We're gonna go to advanced features and then right there you'll see side button. Oops, we're gonna go to side button. And you can see right there it says press and hold is set to wake Bixby, but we're gonna set it to power off menu so that now when we long press that power button, you can see we get the option to power off or restart our tablet. And while we're in here, we're gonna also change the double press action of the power button. Now, I never recommend changing this when you're using it on your phone because it's really convenient to bring up your camera by doing a double tap of the power button. But because this is a tablet, I don't think a lot of people actually use the cameras on a tablet. I've never personally in my life seen anyone walking around the streets taking photos on a huge tablet. So I think it's safe to say that changing this from launching camera to open a specific app might be a little bit more useful for people. So I would just go through this entire list and select what you want to map the double press to. So maybe you want to launch something like Netflix or maybe something even useful like a flashlight. So now when you double press uh, the power button, you can see what it will do is turn on the flashlight for you and then you just gotta double press it again to turn it off. And what's really nice about this is it will, it will even work if your tablet is locked. So if you're walking around, you don't need to unlock your tablet to enable that flashlight. You can see you can use it anytime. So definitely go ahead and set that up. Now for this next setting, what we're gonna do is customize our lock screen. So if we go back into our settings, go to lock screen and then tap on the edit right here over lock screen you can see we can customize all of the elements on our lock screen. So if you want to edit maybe the actual clock style, you can tap on it. And then right here, you can change it to a different font. So go through here and select whatever you want. And then if you want to actually change the clock itself, maybe from something that's digital to analog, you can go through all of these options right here. So go ahead and just customize this to uh, whatever your preference is. And then if you want to change the color, you have all of these options down here as well. And then what we can do is also change these buttons right here. So you can see we have a camera right here. Um, and again, I don't really use the camera on the tablet. If you don't either, you can get rid of this by tapping on it. And now you can set it to something else that's a little bit more useful. So maybe we want to bring up the calculator. I actually use the calculator really often. So this would be great to be able to access directly from my lock screen instead of having to unlock my phone and then finding the calculator app. I can just use it directly from here. Of course, here we have Samsung Notes. I pretty much use this as well. So I'll just leave that right there. And the last thing you can do is add some contact information so if your tablet ever gets misplaced you can add an email or a phone number here so that somebody can reach out to you and email you or, or, or give you a call to return the tablet for you granted that they're actually nice enough to do that rather than steal it and running away so definitely add your contact information right there once you're done just tap done to save those changes all right now for this next setting this one is going to be very specific for tablets because the way i use my tablet and i think a lot of people out there use their tablets as well is they just keep it always plugged in so it's always at full battery because they just keep it maybe on a table somewhere and it just displays all of their information or they use it as a baby monitor and it's just always plugged in 
Now, the bad thing about that is it's going to keep your battery at 100%. And that's not really that good for lithium-ion batteries to keep them capped off at 100%. So what we're going to do is go into battery and device care. And then we're going to go to battery right there. We're going to scroll down. We're going to go to more battery settings. And we're going to enable this feature that says protect battery. And what it says is it will limit the maximum charge to 85%. So what's going to happen is if you keep your tablet plugged in all the time, it will never reach 100%. It will just stay at 85%. And that's just a little bit better for the longevity of your battery so if you're going to keep your tablet for many years to come it's going to keep the battery as healthy as possible and you can even maybe take this a step further by disabling fast charging because if you keep it plugged in a lot of the time uh, you're probably not in a rush to go anywhere and you don't need that fast charging and what this is going to do is just generate less heat while you're charging the tablet and that's just also going to be a little bit better for the battery all right now the next thing i'm going to get you guys to do is something i always do on all of my galaxy devices whether it's a phone or a tablet and it is to bring the brightness bar over up here so that you only need to swipe down once to get access to the brightness bar instead of having to swipe twice and i also never use these buttons right here i think it just kind of clutters the interface so we're going to get rid of these buttons now to do that we're going to swipe down again we're going to go to the three dots up here we're going to go to quick panel layout and then right there you'll see brightness control we're going to set this to show always and then for those buttons we're going to tap right here and we're going to set it from show always to just don't show at all now we're going to tap done and you can see when we swipe up now we have the brightness control right there from just one swipe and we got rid of those buttons to just clean everything up a little bit and make it look a little nicer we also of course have all of our quick settings right here so we have our wi-fi our volume bluetooth uh, landscape or portrait uh, toggle, airplane mode, flashlight, battery saving. And if we scroll down, you can see we even have more options. And then if we scroll over, we have even more options. Now, I would suggest you kind of just go through here and reorganize everything so that it suits what you use most often. So you want to have your most used ones up here. I personally wouldn't really need this flashlight here because we already mapped a flashlight to the double press of our power button. So I can probably replace it with something that's more useful for me. So if you want to edit these, what you can do is just swipe down, go over, plus, press this plus icon, and you can see that there's even more options up here. So if you ever want to use any of these other things, like, you know, battery protect, have a kids mode, uh, you know, extra dim, you can tap and drag them down here into your main settings. And then if you want to reorganize everything in here, all you got to do is just tap and hold on something and then you can drag it around. And let's say I want to put nearby share all the way at the top. Now we'll just tap done and then you'll see that the nearby share will be up here at the top so I can easily access it anytime that I need. All right, now let's talk a little bit about the stylus that we get with the tablet. And the first setting we're going to enable is to make sure that we never lose this pen because that would really suck. So what we're going to do is just tap on the button while we point at our tablet to bring up the air command center. We're going to tap on the settings right there. And scroll down to more S Pen settings and enable this feature that says warn if S Pen is left behind. And what this will do is give you a notification anytime you take your tablet and walk away and maybe you left your S Pen on a table. It will give you a warning on your tablet telling you that your S Pen has been left behind so that you can go back and get it. And then you can also enable S Pen Unlock. Now this is really convenient if let's say you're using your S Pen on your tablet and then the tablet locks. You can just tap on the button to unlock it. Now this isn't really a security threat because you can see that it will actually lock if your S Pen is reattached or disconnected from your tablet. So it's not like anyone can just come in, tap the button and unlock your S Pen. No, you have to first unlock it and then if it locks while you're using your S pen then you can unlock it so it's just a nice little convenient feature if you're using the s pen all right now if we go back into our s pen settings there's another really useful feature on here it's already enabled by default but i just want you to know about it because some people might not know it's called screen off memos and what this will do is allow you to write notes on the lock screen of your Galaxy Tab. I really love this for needing to quickly jot something down. Instead of having to unlock your you know, tablet and go to your notes app, you can do it directly from the lock screen. So you can see that, let's say I'll attach my S Pen back to the tablet and then I lock my display. When I take the S Pen out, you can see it says right here. So if I need to make a quick note like doctor appointment, you know, 2 p.m., and then maybe write the doctor's number. And then I can just tap save to save this to my Samsung notes to reference to it back later. This is such a useful feature. I use it quite often if I ever need to quickly jot something down. All right, now the last thing I wanna show you guys is how easy it is to use your stylus to fill in PDF documents. So you can see I have a document right here and instead of having to tap into each one of these fields and then use a keyboard and your finger, you can literally use your S Pen to start handwriting in any of these boxes and it will convert it to text. So to show you, let's say I wanna write my name
And just like that, you can see it converted it to text, even capitalized the letters. So this makes it so easy to just go through forms, write everything in quickly. And then at the end, you can of course add your signature with a S pen, which is much easier to do than with your finger. And it just makes for a really convenient and easy way to fill out large forms. But there you go, guys, that is going to do it for this video of all of the first things that you need to do on your new Galaxy tablet. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned some new things. If there's anything that I didn't mention that you think others could benefit from, from, definitely go ahead and leave it in the comments below but that's going to do it for now thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next one peace